selected. Yeah, one minute. Uh, sir, uh, I don't see anybody in the time. waiting room. Whoever I see in the waiting room, I'll just admit them. Yeah, we are live on YouTube and we can start. The Quizmaster will be joining shortly and he'll also give you all the instructions. So please listen to them properly and answer. All the best. Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, can you guys hear me clearly? Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Sir, actually, there was some network issue in our area. Suddenly, we left from the meeting. Uh, can you please share the game code for the buzzin.live? Yeah, no problem. Okay. A game code for the buzzin.live will be shared during the buzz around. That was just okay. for test. Okay, sir. Yeah, all right. I think uh, we're all set and good to start. So, Devasmita, over to you. Sure. Hi, Venki. Hello, guys. How are all of you? Fine, ma'am. Great, great. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Devasmita and I'm from Bajaj Auto. And it's great to see all of you guys who have qualified for the finale here. And um, I'll just wish you all the best. We have a great quiz master among us, Venki. And uh, I hope we'll have a quite fun and interesting quiz. Um, so yeah, teams, all the best. If any of you have any questions right now, you can maybe um, just uh, uh, unmute yourselves. And yeah. Okay, so no questions. So over to you, Venki. Ma'am. Okay, yeah, ma go ahead. Ma'am, is there any negative marks for the quiz round, ma'am? The buzzer round? We'll tell uh, you there the will room. be. We'll tell so, you uh, Venki will walk you through all those details round-wise. Okay, Venki, over to you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Devasmita. Uh, good morning, everyone. A uh, very warm welcome to all of you to the grand finale of Talk, brought to you by Bajaj Auto, the very uh, fantastic national level, uh, you know, talent and quiz competition for the most, uh, the top colleges in India. And we find that there are some of the best colleges in the country who have uh, qualified and made it here to the grand finale, where you have some fantastic prizes that are lined up for you uh, here today, apart from uh, what we hope will be a very interesting set of questions, uh, right? So uh, let's get cracking with the grand finale of Torque, brought to you by Bajaj, uh, the world's favorite Indian, and uh, several of uh, the Bajaj brands in the Bajaj portfolio. Right, so uh, my name is Venki. Srinivasan, Venkatesh. Uh, most people call me Venki. I don't know if some of you have attended quizzes that uh, Nexus or I have conducted before, uh, but uh, if you haven't, a warm welcome to all of you. You'll find in these quizzes, uh, as a general rule, that the questions may seem to be very complicated, but the answers will be fairly straightforward and simple, right? Uh, you will always be better served by trying to make an intelligent guess instead of trying to uh, do any other means of finding an answer and so on. That will only waste time and it will probably lead you to the wrong answer. So have fun. Enjoy yourselves. When you have a doubt, ask me. I will try to clarify. I'll throw in more clues wherever needed. Right. Uh, this is a grand finale of a contest. There is serious prize money, but also we want to have fun and learn a couple of new things along the way. Right, that's the whole idea of this initiative. So, with that in mind, let's get cracking. Right, so these are the prizes we have 75,000 rupees for the grand champion winner here today, and we have 50,000 rupees for the runner up. So, that's what's at stake. Right, and so now to meet the finalists, I know all of you have already, uh, you know, checked, tested everything, but for we are also live streaming this on YouTube. So when your name, when your college and your name comes up there, just unmute, introduce yourself quickly, tell us uh, which uh, stream you are pursuing and, uh, you know, anything about quizzing that you would like to say. I mean, have you quizzed before? Is this your first quiz? Have you won quizzes before? Whatever it might be. Yeah. So our team number one today in the grand final of Bajaj Talk 2022-23 is from IIT ISM Dhanbad, the uh, Indian Institute of Technology, in Indian School of Mines Dhanbad, a very old venerable institution in India, represented by Sai, Yogesh and Niranjan. Uh, so good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Sai Siva Sampath Purada. Uh, I am from Vishakhapatnam and I am a third year undergraduate pursuing Bachelor of Technology in Mechanical Engineering at IIC, IIT ISM Dhanbad. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Yogesh Narana Gangsetti. I'm pursuing third year Bachelor of Technology and Mechanical Engineering. I'm from Gunpur. All right. Um, good morning, one and all. Uh, my name is Niranjan Tumanapalli. I am from Varangal, and I'm a third year undergrad from in Mechanical Engineering from IIT ISM Dhanbad. All right. So all of you Mechanical Engineering third years, welcome. Who is the designated captain in the team? Uh, yes, sir. It's me, Niranjan. It's you, Niranjan. Okay. So, Niranjan, we will expect you to give the answers when it's your team's turn after internal discussion, as well as uh, be the primary participant in the buzzer round when it happens. All right. All the best, IIT ISM. Following them on as team number two today, our uh, familiar uh, institution in Indian quizzing circles, IIT Madras, represented by Aditya and Prakatishwar. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. My name is Aditya Upadhyay and uh, I am from IIT Madras. I am pursuing B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering and uh, I am in my final year. And yeah, I am really excited about the quiz. I will try to perform my best. Thank you. Oh, uh, hello, everyone. This is Prakatishwar. I am a final year Mechanical Engineering undergraduate from IIT Madras. And this is my first quiz, actually. And I'm, I am excited to, to be a part of it. Thank you. Welcome, Aditya and Prakatishwar. Who is the captain between the two of you? Sir, I told me. Prakatishwar. Okay. All right. All right. Moving on, team number three from the east of the country, Jadavpur University. 
Welcome, Devesh and Ayush. So there's one more team member, Raj Rai. Okay. All right. Three of you, please go ahead. Good morning, sir. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Raj Rai from Jadapur University. I am pursuing mechanical engineering and currently in third year. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Myself, Devesh Kumar Yadav from Mechanical Engineering Department, Jadapur University. Hello, good morning, sir. Myself, Ayush Kumar Barnwar, pursuing mechanical engineering from third year, Jadapur University. Okay, welcome. Uh, the three JU mechanical engineering students. Uh, who's the captain? So I will be. Yeah, can you just spell your name? R E J R E I. Okay, that's right. All right, that's right. Thank you. Moving on to team number four. We come, we stay on the East Coast and come down to Varangal, NIT Varangal. Darshan, Rachit, and Aryank. Uh, good morning, sir. I am Rachit Khatri, uh, and we are st I am studying uh, mechanical masters in automobile engineering from NIT Varangal. Morning, sir. My name is Aryank Singh, and I am pursuing mechanical engineering from NIT Varangal. Right. And our third team member uh, is very unfortunate; he won't be able to join. His interview got scheduled. All right. Okay. And no Rajit is going to be the captain. Rajit is going to be the captain. Excellent. So we have an automobile engineering master's person here. So uh, let's see whether you are able to answer some of the automobile engineering questions that may be there. We never know. Uh, moving on, team number five. Right. Team number five is IIT BHU, represented by Amitesh and Priyanshu. Uh, good morning, sir. Myself, Amitesh Vats, and I am pursuing. Mechanical engineer from IIT BHU, and I'm in third year right now. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Priyanshu Dahiya, and currently I am pursuing mechanical engineering here at IIT BHU, and I'm really excited for the quiz. Welcome, Amitesh and Priyanshu. Who will be answering? Sir, I will be answering. Priyanshu. That's Priyanshu, right? Okay, great, Priyanshu. All right. Let's move on to uh, team number six, which is from Kharagpur, IIT Kharagpur. IIT KGP, Alapan, Ayesh Kanta, and Samya. Hi, everyone. My name is Ayesh Kant Mishra, uh, and uh, I'm a third year undergraduate student of the Department of Mechanical Engineering here at IIT Kharagpur. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alapan Shan. I'm a third year undergraduate student of the Department of Mechanical Engineering uh, at IIT Kharagpur, and I'm from Kolkata. Um, hello everyone, myself Samaranjan Sao from Mechanical Engineering Department, uh, studying at IIT Kharagpur. I am from Bhubnesha. Thank you. Okay, welcome IIT KGP team. And who's the captain? Mm, sir, I am Ayashkant. Ayashkant, okay. All right. Let's go on to team number seven. Team number seven is the second team from IIT BHU. Uh, so please introduce yourselves. Sir, my name is Vadikar Gajan Parshura. I am pursuing mechanical engineering from IIT BHU. Welcome. Sir, my name is Vari Ramavut Naidu. I am pursuing mechanical engineering final year here at IIT BHU. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Elisadi Krishna Pawansar from mechanical part 4 of IIT BHU. And I am going to answer the questions in buzzer room. You are going to answer the questions. So, uh, so do I call you Krishna? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, Krishna. Thank you. Moving on, team number eight is IIT Gauhati, all the way to the east. Aman, Gaurav, and Shivam. Uh, hi, everyone. Myself, Aman. I am a final year uh, master's student in machine design at IIT Gauhati. Uh, unfortunately, two of my other team members could not join due to certain health issues. So I'll be moving forward with this. Oh, you'll be taking part alone? All right. Okay, Aman. Yes. All the best. Okay, all the very best. Uh, team number nine in today's final, moving back to the west of the country, NIT Jaipur, Mansi, Neha, and Harshita. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm Mansi Shinde, pursuing third year um, in NIT Jaipur, mechanical engineering. Uh, so one of our members won't be able to join uh, Neha Gupta. Uh, her region okay. has uh, network issues. All right. Mm -hmm. Harshita is here? Yes, sir. Hello. 
Ashita, you're on mute. Okay, Harshita, your audio is not coming through. So, uh, but nevertheless, welcome to the quiz. Nice to see an all girls team in the final. So, Mansi, I presume you will be giving the answers. Uh, sir, her laptop has some system issues. Um, she just no problem. can't uh, on the camera. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, you can give the answers anyway. Uh, ask her to stay uh, with the camera on uh, and you can speak. Not a problem. All right. Okay, let's move on. The final team in today's grand finale are NITK Suratkal, Amit and Ravindra. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amit Kumar. I'm from NIT Suratkal. And I'm in mechanical third year. All right. So I think okay. my teammate is having some network connectivity issues while speaking. Okay. All right. So you will be uh, you will be giving the answers anyway, I presume. Yes. Yes. I am the captain of the team. All right, Amit. All right. Great. Thank you. Warm welcome to all of you. I think some teams are full, uh, have all the members here. Some teams have a member or two missing. One team I know has two people missing, has only one member here. But nevertheless, uh, we'll move forward. It's an online quiz. I know that there are constraints. We couldn't get everybody in at the same time. But all the best to all of you. <clears throat> Let's take a look at how this quiz will work. Yeah, we have five rounds in the quiz. Uh, three of the rounds are going to be on normal, two of the rounds are on normal passing format. One round is a special round. Two of the rounds are completely on the buzzer. For the buzzer, you've already done a test on buzzin.live. So when the buzzer round comes, we will give you a game code for that on the chat. And then you can, of course, uh, uh, those rounds will be played on the buzzer. The other rounds are going to be played on a normal passing format. Right? Some, uh, I know these rules have already been explained to you, but one last time I'm explaining these rules uh, to you on the next slide, which is that we need you to play fair, right? Uh, the moment we suspect any malpractice, we are going to call it out. Remember, it's a live stream. There are probably several thousand people watching. Uh, it will also be the final decision of both the Bajaj team and the Nexus team to decide who's the winner. Even if after the quiz, we will go back and look at the recording. And if we find that something is suspicious, we might rescind the result, right? So please, let's not do all of that. Let's play fair. Let's have fun. That's the whole idea. Please collaborate among the two of you through whatever means you want and discuss answers, but please do not try to search for answers. Please do not also have anybody else in the room speaking. When we were doing the tests in one or two cases, we thought we heard somebody else in the room. Uh, if it's your parents or somebody who came in by accident, that's okay. But please don't have anybody else in the room and try to take their help and so on. We will be able to spot that and in which case you will be disqualified, right? Reiterating the rules in the next slide one more time. Yeah, so we need to see hands on screen like this all the time. There is nothing to type anywhere in the quiz, right? So there is absolutely no need to be like this. There's nothing to type at all. You only have to answer orally. Hands on screen, one nominated member to answer and there are observers monitoring, okay? Uh, all right, so let's not let's hopefully not have to repeat this during the quiz. Let's have fun and play fair. Let's go straight into round number one. Round number one is clockwise uh, round the clock. So let's see the rules of this round. There are going to be 10 questions. We will start with team number one, IIT ISM. Infinite bounce, which means there are no assigned questions other than the first question to team one. If the first question is answered by team four, the second question will go directly to team five. That way the questions are randomized. It's 10 points per answer, whether you answer on direct or on pass. And there are part points available. If there are two parts, we will give you five points, but we will not tell you whether that part has been answered or not. So if you answer one part also, it will keep passing till somebody gives a complete answer. Then you will get five and whoever gave the complete answer will get 10. There is absolutely no negative marking whatsoever, right? So don't say pass. I would like you to take a guess. Most questions are guessable. 
this is not a specific automobile engineering quiz. It's a general quiz, but with a lot of science focus in it. Science, engineering, technology focus, because that's the field that all of you are in. All of you pretty much are mechanical engineers. So this is a science plus technology. You know, there's a little bit of art and architecture. There's a little bit of uh, all kinds of flavor in the quiz. Uh, and uh, so I hope you enjoy it, right? Let's go first question to team number one, IIT ISM. Niranjan, uh, discuss and you will give me an answer. All right. We'll give you about 40 seconds, 30 to 40 seconds on the direct and just 10 seconds once it passes on to the team. Here is question number one. We start with the Bajaj Chetak question because the quiz is a talk quiz brought to you by Bajaj at the end of the day. The Bajaj Chetak is one of the vehicles eligible for the Indian government's FAME subsidy. Now, FAME is an initiative by the government to narrow the gap between the prices of traditional internal combustion vehicles and electric vehicles. If F stands for faster and E stands for electric vehicle, what does the A and the M in FAME stand for? Hands on screen, please. I can already see people trying to type. I will be calling out names, right? Uh, if I find it suspicious, please keep your hands on screen. So, so for example, Aryan yes, please. I would like you to see, I would like to see your hands on screen, right? Okay. Right. Team one, what does the A and M in fame stand for? You can make a guess. Uh, These sorry, are two yes. regular English words. Sir, automobile. Automobile. And what does the... So A and M together stands for automobile, you're saying? Yes, sir. Okay. I, that's not correct. Passes to IIT Madras. Uh, sir, it would be uh, automobile manufacturing. Automobile manufacturing. Okay. Passes to uh, Jadapur. Sir, adoption and manufacturing of hybrid. Adoption and manufacturing. Adoption and manufacturing of hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles, that's the correct answer. So FAME means faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles because that's what the government wants industry and people to do, adopt and manufacture vehicles faster. So they're giving subsidies for that. So uh, Bajaj Chetak EV is one of the vehicles that is part of that subsidy scheme. So excellent answer that was answered by Jadavpur University who get themselves the full 10 points on this question. There are no part points on this question. In other question, we might have part points. This one, there's no part points. So 10 points to JU. Next question to NIT Varangal. NIT Varangal, due to its size and weight, the two people involved built a 60-foot rail track to move it. A small wheeled dolly was used to get things started. What was set into motion on this track sometime during the early 20th century? So you have to think between 1900 and 1910. This was a very important and interesting thing. And it actually involved a piece of mechanical engineering, as you can see there, because they had to build a 60-foot rail track to move something. And a small wheeled dolly was used to get things started. So like what was built, I need to guess. Yeah, you need to guess what is this you know, what is this invention we are talking about or what was built? And the time period is between 1900 and 1910. A diesel in, uh, steam engine, steam engine, steam engine. A diesel nice or guess. steam engine. Nice guess, not the steam engine. Passes to BHU. Sir. Diesel engine. Not the diesel engine. Passes to KGP. Yeah. Is it the first plane? Like Wright Brothers. This is the Wright Brothers first plane, you're saying. So yeah. to move the plane, they had to build a 60-foot rail track. Uh, maybe. Let's see the answer. You're absolutely right. Excellent. Great answer there. Uh, who answered that? Mm, sir, I ask okay. Well done. IIT KGP. Excellent answer getting you 10 points. This was the first flight by the Wright brothers uh, in a place called Kitty Hawk in uh, um, the US, where uh, to get the first flight off the ground, they had to actually build a 60 foot rail track and use a small dolly to make it take off. Well done. Great answering. 10 points to KGP. 
Next question to BHU again. The next BHU team, Krishna and team. These type of incandescent light bulbs have been in use since the early 20th century. The arrangement used is often triangular with two bulbs at two corners with one being a spare. The third is occupied by a gas light to be used in case of a power failure. Where can you see such a setup? So I just need you to tell me the type of structure in which such a light setup can be seen. As a little clue, let me tell you, this kind of structure can possibly be found in places like, say, Kolkata and Madras, but cannot be found in a place like Bangalore, where I am currently. So this structure can be found in places like Kolkata and Madras or Chennai, but cannot be found in a place like Bangalore. Like in mines? Mines. Nice guess. Not mines. Passes to Gavati. Need to be quick on the pass. I'm not getting an answer. Passes on NIT Jaipur. Street lights and LEDs. Not street lights. Passes on to uh, NIT K. Sir, lighthouse. Lighthouse. That's an excellent answer. Amit and team from NIT Suratkal. Lighthouses indeed. This is why you need to have a spare light all the time because the lighthouse can never run out of light. It so has we to have the light in our college. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, the appropriate team answered it because Suratkal has a beach right there and uh, there is a lovely lighthouse right there. And uh, uh, yeah, so, so very well done. Uh, so not surprising that the coastal team answered that question. But this is the lighthouse and this has been the traditional arrangement of bulbs in a right lighthouse for a very long time. Well done, NID Suratkal. Uh, next question back to uh, ISM Danba. Okay, ISM Danba, simple question. I'll show you an image. Tell me who are these two engineers? They are out on a geological field trip in West Texas in the late 1960s. And these are not two random people. These are two very, very important people. Who are these two people? They are seen out on a geological expedition in West Texas in the late 1960s. If you get one person's name, you'll definitely know the other person's name as well. Is there any hint? Uh, all the hints are given there. The place is West Texas. The time is the late 1960s. That is super important. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're out doing some research specifically. Like I said, if you know one person's name, one of the two people is more famous than the other. But if you know one person's name, you'll mostly know the other person's name as well. Do you have a guess, Niranjan? No? Okay. I have to pass you. IIT Madras. Guys, you need to be quick on the pass. Uh, if you're not pass. answering. Okay. Passes. Ju. Jadavpur, do you have a guess? No. Passes, NIT Varangal? Uh, sir, is it uh, something tunnel? Uh, Nothing to do with any a tunnel? A no. Yeah. Passes to BHU? Sir, I think they are, uh, one of them is Neil Armstrong and the other one is Buzz Aldrin. Perfect answer, IIT BHU. That is absolutely correct. That is indeed Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. That's why we told you West Texas and so on and late 1960s because 1969 was the moon landing 
and they were doing research to collect uh, uh, you know rocks and so on in preparation for their trip to the moon excellent answer priyanshu gets it absolutely right iit bhu off the mark with 10 points well done great answering so like you can see even though the question may seem very vague the answer is something you can actually work out and it's familiar so make a guess and don't pass right okay next question to kgp an Australian software programmer created this programming language where programs are pictures made up of regions of solid colors. The idea is that the program should resemble the works of a painter. Which programming language and which painter? Both are almost the same. In fact, if you just give me the name of a painter, that will also do. Because the programming language is known more or less by the name of the painter only. Uh, is it the Picasso? Like Picasso? Not, good guess, not Picasso. Passes to BHU. Any guess, Krishna? No? Passes? Gavati? Oh, sir, is it Julia? Nope. Passes. NIT Jaipur. Uh, Morgan, I guess. Not Morgan. Passes to uh, Suratkal. Sorry, only one guess. Sorry, only one Pied, guess. Sir, Pite, maybe P-I-E-T. Uh, what is the name of the painter? Uh, sir, the uh, programming language probably might be Pite. Name of the painter, I don't recall. You don't know. Okay. We'll pass you on then. IIT ISM. Passing on. IIT Madras. Fight Mandarin. Something like that. Who's answering? Uh, ISM Dunbar. What is your answer? Fight Mandarin. Okay. Mandarin. Uh, Mandarin. Okay, the, the answer is Piet Mondrian, right? Oh, it is Piet oh, is the programming language and the answer is Piet Mondrian. But uh, guys, uh, I, I would, uh, you know, I am sensing that people are searching for answers. Uh, don't do that. We can spot that very clearly, right? Uh, if, I, if I get a whiff of suspicion one more time, then I will have to disqualify you, okay? Warning you right away. But since we asked for the answers, we'll give you points. We'll give NIT Suratkal Team 10 five points because they said pay it. And uh, we will give IIT ISM uh, also five points only for saying pay it Mondrian. Yeah. So five points each to Team 1 and to Team 10. Question now to Team 2, IIT Madras. Before that, one second, just go back to the previous question. I just want to set it up. Uh, is everybody online? Uh, are there people with their videos off? I do see that some videos are not on, right? Uh, team 9, especially uh, Mansi, who's your teammate? Uh, Harshita needs to put her video on. Otherwise, if she has network problems, she has to drop out and you have to take part alone. Because uh, it's not fair. No, the she other has time. network issues. Uh, if she has network issues, she has to either come on on video or she has to drop off. Because it's not fair on the other teams. Tomorrow, if somebody okay. comes and so she says, will drop. yeah, then mm -hmm. uh, she'll have to drop off and you'll have to play alone. We have to be fair with the rules. You have to either ask her to put her video on or ask her to drop off one of the two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, I need to see your videos on, right? Uh, nobody should have their videos off. I'm just checking the list once again. Okay, the only three people with the videos off are my team members who are keeping score and monitoring this. Everybody else needs to have your videos on. All right, let's move on. Question number six to IIT Madras. This civil engineer was the first Indian to be elected a fellow of the Royal Society of London. He was a member of a prominent shipbuilding dynasty. One of the ships that this company built is said to have had an American person on board during the War of 1812. Which famous Indian business family is this? What did this American person write when he was on the ship? So what he wrote is today something very, very famous in the US that everybody in the US knows.
ఐటి మెడ్రాస్ విచ్ ఫేమస్ ఇండియన్ బిజినెస్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఇస్ దిస్ అండ్ వాట్ డిడ్ దిస్ అమెరికన్ రైట్ Okay, uh, need an answer, please. We would guess American National Anthem. American National Anthem, okay. And which family? No idea? No idea. Okay, passes to J.U. Raj Rai, no answer. Have to be quick on the pass. Passing to uh, Varangal. sir uh, is it the american national anthem and and uh, which business family okay. from india sir is it the uh, wadias it is the wadias well done absolutely right you get it perfect you get the full 10 points on that it is the wadias and the wadias built the ship called uh, hms minden on which this person called francis scott key traveled and wrote the star spangled banner which later became the american national anthem so five points to team 2 iit madras for saying american national anthem and the full 10 points to team 4 nit varangal for giving the full answer that's ardhasir wadia as you can see first member first indian to be a member of the royal society a great engineer uh, uh, who did uh, some fantastic pioneering engineering work from india all right next question to kgp no next question to idbhu sorry next question to bhu okay uh, idbhu this is an audio question uh, listen to the audio i'm not sure sound has been shared venkat uh, you need to check on that i'm not seeing the sound icon on top but we'll play you an audio uh, this is just after a few years after the invention of the vacuum tube a soviet radio engineer invented the ether phone one of the first electronic instruments we know the instrument by his name today who was the engineer or what is this instrument that you hear being played let's play the audio yeah so uh, just tell us this is a very interesting thing because normally it's a mixture of arts and science there's an engineer who's actually invented a musical instrument so who is this engineer or what is this instrument iit bhu priyanshu come on make a guess if you know are you there it uh, bhu uh, priyanshu and team okay can't seem to see them on the call at all don't know if they've dropped off for some reason okay passes to it kgp mm, sir uh, like is the engineer theramin it he it is theramin well done uh, ash absolutely right it is leon theramin who came up with the instrument called the theramin and if you watch big bang theory you'll know that sheldon cooper the character is one of his favorite instruments he likes to play the theremin right well done iit kgp gets a good 10 points on theremin next question to iit bhu krishna aunty okay the inventor who patented these two technologies has received an oscar in the scientific and engineering category and an oscar of merit for the same 
which are the two technologies that he patented. One is used in cinema, right? And the second is used in sports. We'll show you a, another image. Yeah. So one, uh, this is the one that's largely used in uh, kind of sports, right? And the previous one is largely used in cinema. Both are two different types of uh, uh, cameras, you can say. So what are these two? As a clue for the second one, uh, if you see that second image, you will see that there are lots of wires leading up to the camera. And this is something you would have definitely seen if you watch cricket. First one, again, is a type of camera that is used by certain directors. Okay, Krishna and team. Sir, and team. Uh, oh. Self-aligning camera. Okay, and? Self-handling uh, camera speed. for one. And what is the second one? What you may have seen uh, in sports? Auto-focusing. Auto-focus, okay. Good guesses, but in not correct. Passes to Gavati. Aman, do you have a guess? Uh, high speed imaging for the second one. Okay, high speed imaging for the second one. And for the first one? No idea, sir. No idea? Okay. Mansi? Um, sir, uh, I think it's uh, movement tracking. Okay, movement tracking and? Just nuts. Okay, uh, NITK? Uh, I need a guess quickly, Amit? Uh, sir, I have, I have no clue. No clue? Pass okay, passes, ISM? Uh, sir, uh, these are guesses like. Sir, first one is gimbal, which is used for aligning, uh, aligning and stability. And okay. second one is like um, 3D image, 3D image processing. 3D image processing. Okay, gimbal and 3D image processing. Nice guess, uh, but not correct. Passes to IIT Madras. Sir, you go with gimbal and spider cam. Gimbal and spider cam. Passes to Ju. So movement tracking and spider cam. Okay, passes to a Varangal. Spider and gimbal. Okay, I, I already heard that from someone. Passes to BHU. Sir, it's gimbal and slow motion camera. Good guess again. No, passes to KGP. Uh, yeah, the second one is spider cam. The first one, uh, like, uh, it is a type of like uh, steady camera type. Uh, they steady cam. That is camera. all I wanted. I will give it yeah. to you. It is steady cam and spider cam specifically. Lots of people going for gimbal, yeah. but gimbal is uh, just a, a different variant. What we wanted was the same inventor, Garrett Brown, came up with a steady cam that was uh, popularized by directors like Stanley Kubrick. And the spider cam or sky cam, which you find often enough in cricket these days to give you aerial shots of what's going on. Excellent answering. Five points to IIT Madras team two, who said uh, spider cam first. And the full 10 points to IIT Kharagpur. That's two answers in a row with theremin and steady cam and spider cam. Right. Next question to BHU, Krishna and team. This is an interesting question. The brilliant Bengali mathematician Radhanath Sigdar was George Everest's favorite colleague. In 1852, he precisely computed the height of Peak 15, as it was then called, later renamed Mount Everest, to be 29,000 feet, officially making it the tallest mountain in the world. But his superior arbitrarily added two feet to the calculation. So even now, if you look at it, it will say the height of Mount Everest is 29,002 feet. And that remained the official height till it was recalculated, of course, in 1955. 
why did his superior, his boss, add two feet to Radhanath Sigda's calculation? So it's a bit of an explanation answer. But why did he add those? Hello. Feet? Yeah. Generally, there will be movements of tectonical plates. So when it moves, the mountain height increases. Ah, okay. Tectonic plate movement, so mountain height will increase. Very good guess, but uh, two land masses are colliding in uh, understood, central understood, understood what tectonic plate movement means. Got it. Nice guess, but we were looking for something more fun as the answer. Uh, passes to Aman and team. Gavati. Sir, I was also thinking the same tectonic plate. Okay. Passes to Mansi. So I was having to see. Okay. You need to think of a more fun answer. It's not a very science type answer. It's a more fun answer than that. Uh, passes to NITK. Uh, sir, it's because I think uh, it would to thousand feet sounds like a very round bit of number. That's why they increased it. Absolutely correct. You got it bang on correct, Amit. Uh, 29,000 feet sounds like a very rounded up number. People would think that, okay, you know, the real value cannot be 29,000 feet. Somebody has rounded up because how can you measure it to be exactly 29,000 feet? So uh, his boss thought that people will say your calculations are wrong. So he arbitrarily added two feet so that it seems like a kind of a, a very scientifically computed kind of number. Beautiful answer there, NITK. 10 points to you. Lovely answering. Last question of round one goes to ISM. ISM, the straight line belongs to man. The curved line belongs to God. Said X. His work reflects these through juxtapositions of highly animated geometric masses and floral or reptilian metal work. His final unfinished work is a big church in this European city. Who is this famous architect? In which European city will you find his most famous work? As a clue, it's a European city that is well known for football. Okay. So European city that is well known for football. And there is a big unfinished church here. Let's see the image. Yeah. This is the a picture of the city with a lot of his works. A lot of his buildings are seen in this city. Who is the famous architect? And which city is this? It's a European city well known for football. Sir, uh, like the math, like that person is Da Vinci, Leonardo, Leonardo Da Vinci, and the city uh, guess like Paris. Leonardo. Oh, sorry, Rome, Rome, uh, Rome. Leonardo Da Vinci and Rome. Okay, passes to IIT Madras. Need a guess? Praka? No guess? Okay, passes. Rajai? Ju? Sir, Antoni Gaudi and uh, Barcelona. Sorry, say again? Antoni Gaudi and Barcelona. Antoni Gaudi and Barcelona is absolutely right. Perfect answer. Do you know what the unfinished this building is called? Uh, pardon, sir? No. Okay, it's called Sagrada Familia. It's uh, the sacred church in Barcelona. It's an unfinished building by Antoni Gaudi. And this is in Barcelona. That's a good 10 points to Jadapur University there at the end of the first round. So round one is done. We will take a look at the scores a little later. Uh, let's finish the buzzer round and then we can take a look at the scores. So we go to first strike, which is our buzzer round. There are going to be six questions. I am going to ask you, nothing will come on the screen. I will read it out. So uh, the buzzin.live code will be posted now on the chat. And we have one nominated person from each team attempting the buzzer. There you go. The buzzin.live code is posted on the chat. So please go to buzzin.live and go to the Enter the code and enter the appropriate team identification. My team will confirm to me once all 10 of you are in, then we will get started. Yeah, don't buzz now. Only after the question is read, 
Uh, please, Buzz. We have six, ten, five, one. Yeah, it was a mistake. No worries, no worries, no problem. Team three, team four, and team seven should enter. Sir, a few minutes, sir. There is a network issue. I'm connecting. And Venkat, you please announce and call out which team has buzzed, and only that team will answer. Right? Don't answer yeah. out of turn, guys. Uh, the buzzing mm -hmm. order will come up on the on the on buzzing dot live. So if the first person who has buzzed gets it wrong, we'll give it to the second person who's already in that buzzing order. There's no need to buzz again, right? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, I was saying that other than my leader, uh, if uh, the team member knows the answer, mm -hmm. then how should we convey? Well, you'll have to stay in contact with your leader okay, uh, in some manner so that uh, that person can 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 buzz and give the answer team four and team seven waiting for you okay i think krishna is just sorting out his network issue yes sir and uh, rachit rachit got disconnected he... yeah looks like rachit's dropped off yeah, he's in the control. waiting room actually okay okay uh, can you just um... yeah yeah he's admitted okay all right Uh, Rachit, the code is here for you. Again. In the meanwhile, I I joined the bus. Uh... Okay, Aryan, you joined? No problem. Then you can play. Not an issue. One of you alone, please. But So, Rachit, you can relax. Aryan will give the answers. Uh, will buzz and give the answers. If you'd like to collaborate, of course, you can do that through call or whatever it might be. Yeah. Krishna, have you joined? Sir, no, sir. I am joining. Can you have, if you are having a problem, if you, you can have one of your other teammates join in, perhaps? I will convey to them. Yeah, we are waiting only for you guys. We are a little behind schedule, so let's kind of move this on. We still have half the quiz to go. In the meanwhile, uh, scoring team, can you, uh, uh, my team which is scoring, can you send me a WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp with an image of the scorecard that you have? I'm maintaining scores as well. We'll just cross-check that so that there are no disputes. Yes, I'm sending it. Okay. We'll we'll pull up the, we'll show the scores after this round is done. Yeah, all the teams are here. Okay, all right. Yes, sir, I am. Yeah, okay, all teams are in. Just give me one second. Okay, no worries. Let that happen. Okay, all teams ready. Uh, so this is a buzzer round. And this buzzer round is a very interesting round. It's a very general round. It is on uh, the... I'll just double check the scores that I have as well with the scores that my team has to make sure that we are in sync. Absolutely fine. Perfect. All scores match. All right. So this is a round called On This Day. So we, what we've done is we've picked up interesting incidents in history that have happened on January 7th, on any year in January 7th, right? So listen to the question carefully. Don't interrupt me while I'm still reading the question. It would be ideal for you to wait till I finish and then hit the buzzer. But it's up to you. You want to hit the buzzer early, you can, but I will stop reading. As soon as Venkat alerts me that the buzzer has been hit. All the best. Question one. Which Serbian-American inventor who designed and built the first AC induction motor died on this day in 1943? Which Serbian-American inventor... Was from IATM. Uh, IATM team 2? Tesla. It is Tesla. Well done, IATM. That's plus 8 to you. It's Nikola Tesla. Nicely cracked. Resetting buzzers.
Yeah. All right. Question number two. On this day in 1714, the world's first patent was granted to a person called Henry Mill for a machine that transcribed letters. The world's first patent for a machine that transcribed letters was granted to Henry Mill on this day in 1714. What common object is this with a 10-letter name? It is not used in the world today. Bus from Priyanshu Team 5. Team 5? Sir, it's typewriter. Absolutely right. It is the typewriter. Well done. 8 points to Team 5. So, so far Team 2 and Team 5 scoring. Question number 3. Resetting buzzer. Yeah. So, after the AC induction motor and the typewriter, we go into something different. Question 3. Yeah. Good. All right. On this day in 1610, Galileo Galilei first observed Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. Bus from Team 6. Team 6? Uh, yeah, uh, like, uh, won't you complete the question? I won't complete. Give me an answer. You interrupted me. I said on this day in 1610, Galileo observed Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. Yeah, uh, the moons of Jupiter. That's all I wanted. Plus eight are okay. the moons of which planet? Jupiter. Well done. So that was space science. Jupiter, good buzzing there by IIT KGP. Buzzer has been reset. Question number four. On this day in 1930, which chemical element named after a European country was discovered, making it the last naturally occurring element to be found? It has the atomic number 87. Which element? Bus, bus from Team 10. Team 10? Francium. Excellent answer. Francium is right. Element number 87 is Francium. It is the last naturally occurring element. Everything else after that has been lab synthesized. Good. Plus 8 to Team 10. Next buzzer, question. Buzzer reset. Okay. Question 5. On this day in 1949, the first photographs of what taken with the help of an electron microscope were published. It was sourced from the tissues of a fruit fly. On this day in 1949, the first photographs of what, taken with the help of an electron microscope, were published. It was sourced from the tissues of a fruit fly. So this is kind of biological sciences, if you will. Last call for the buzzer. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nobody is buzzing. Buzz from team seven. Just in time, Team 7. Glycons. Give me a simpler answer, Team 7. I'll give you one more chance. Water soluble. Right. Uh. Mm, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll, it is not glycons or water. We have a buzz later from okay. Team 10. Okay, so team 7, unfortunately, I'll have to give you a minus 4. Team 10, what's your guess? No, sir, it was pressed out of mistake. Like, we initially timed out, so... Okay, all right, all right. Fine, fine, no problem. And team 7, since this is the first negative of the quiz, I want to be liberal. I won't give you a negative. Uh, you're not off the mark yet. So team 7, no negative. The correct answer was genes of chromosomes, right? Since the first photographs of chromosomes or genes were published, because the chromosomes were synthesized from a fruit fly. The fruit fly is known as a model organism from which chromosome, uh, um, you know, re-engineering and so on has been done. Question number six. This, is a, this has nothing to do with science or engineering. It's a sports question. On this day in 1987, who became the first Indian bowler to take 300 test wickets? His birthday was... Was from team one. Team one. Kapil Lev. Kapil Dev is the right answer. Team 1 plus 8 to you. Kapil Dev incidentally celebrating his birthday yesterday. That was Kapil Dev. All right. So good scoring by many teams uh, in, in this round. Uh, let's go and see the scores very quickly before we move on to the next round. Please stay on that buzzin.live call because you might need to use buzzers for the next round as well. Here are the scores after two rounds with three more rounds to go in the Bajaj Talk Grand Finale. IIT ISN Dhanbad are on 13 points, IIT Madras on 18 points, Chadapur University on 20 points, NIT Varangal on 10 points, IIT BHU on 18 points. In an early lead are IIT Kharagpur with 38 points, 
And then we have NITK Suratkal on 33, very close behind them. So it's a battle between KGP and Suratkal at the moment. But remember, anybody can catch up. There's a long way to go. And there are prizes for the top two. Right. Let's go on. Mm -hmm. We go to the next round. The next round is a round that's a grid round. Right? It's called gridlock. You will see a grid. You can pick a topic. Once you pick a topic, which is a random number that you pick, you get a direct which only you answer. Right? If you don't answer it, after that, it opens up on the buzzer for any other team to attempt it on the buzzer. But if you attempt it on the buzzer and get it wrong, there is a negative. And here we will give out negatives. So be a little careful. Uh, you can, for, the, for, for convenience, you can buzz at any time when the question is, uh, you know, being answered. But you will not get a turn to answer till the team whose direct it is completes it. Okay. Uh, we going to do chat or buzzer. Okay. We can do it on the chat. No problem. All right. So we'll do it on the chat. So, uh, if, so the first direct will be to some team. If they don't answer, we'll open it out for others to send your answer in on chat. But remember there will be negative marking. And if there are two parts to be answered and you answer one correct, one wrong, there will still be negative five, right? We'll give you 10 seconds. If you want to, you have to send it on a direct message to Venkat. Our Venkat Raman, you'll have to send it through a direct message. Uh, it's there as Bajaj Talk Finale. You have to send a direct message to Bajaj Talk Finale. Right? So that way, everybody else gets a chance to attempt that question in case the direct team misses it. But the direct team will have their first chance. We're going to do go in ascending order of scores. So uh, first, IIT, BHU, Krishna and team. We'll show you a uh, Yeah, one doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, who are we suppo uh, supposed to send the answers to? You will uh, see on just... chat a, a, a thing saying Bajaj talk finale. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah, thank you. You send it on that. Okay. Uh, IDBHU Krishna, let's go to the grid. Okay, this is just numbers, so just pick Krishna. Eight. 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 Lucky number eight. Okay, this is the blank blank system used to design the Wills or Sears Tower in Chicago. It was pioneered by a Bangladeshi architect and is designed to resist lateral loads. What is such a architectural system called? This is the image. So what is such a system called? Go back to the text. Everyone else, hands on screen, please. No typing. Uh, yeah, we screen. will be uh, sending the answers after. Uh, after I after only after it is wrong. Okay. 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 Otherwise, the question is only with them, and you get exactly five seconds after that to send in your answer. Yes, sir. Bruce Graham. No, nothing to do with Bruce Graham. No. Uh, anybody else wants to try? In five seconds, send in your answer and direct message to Bajaj Talk Finale. Uh, remember, there's negative marking, right? Please don't send answers to everyone. Ayush, uh, Jadavpur, you have sent the answer to everyone. Don't send answers to everyone. You have to send a direct message to Bajaj Talk Finale. Okay, sir. Okay, that's closed. Uh, please tell us uh, which answers have come in. Answers from team three, team seven. All right. Team ten. Okay. Team three again. Team nine. Team five. Team six. Well, team three we are getting multiple. Answers. No, uh, team three will take only the first answer. I'm sorry. Okay, so team three gets points. Okay, team three gets plus uh, 10. Plus 10 to team 10. Okay. 
plus 10 to team 9. Okay. Plus 10 to team 5, 6 as well. 5 and 6 as well. So 5, 6, 3, 5, 6, 9 and 10 get plus 10. Okay. Any one and, of you? And team 7 uh, also said Bruce Graham. No, team this seven? is direct question for team 7. Okay. Okay. All right. Does team 7 get it? So no, I, they have also chatted. They have also put it on chat as well as they gave the answer on the mic. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I lost my connection for a bit. Can you just repeat that? No, no, team. It was uh, team seven's direct. So no minus. Yeah, no minus. Yeah, yeah. no negatives. No negatives. Okay, uh, that's done. So the correct answer, as many of you seem to have given, what's the answer? Anybody can unmute and tell the answer. Yeah, it is bundle tubes. Yeah, bundle tube is right. This is done by a guy called Fazlur Rahman Khan, a Bangladeshi architect. And the inspiration for the tube or the bundle tube was the bamboo uh, crops that he used to see in his hometown of Dhaka, which was in East Pakistan. Okay, next uh, team eight, you will pick next. Aman. Uh, so one. One, okay. Okay, until the mid 1990s, the electric supply in the UK was delivered at 240 volts. I want to see everybody else's both hands on screen, right? I don't want people Googling while the answer is being uh, worked out by some other team. So both hands on screen, please. Until the mid 90s, the electric supply in the UK was delivered at 240 volts, while in the rest of Europe was 220 volts. This disparity was perceived as a barrier to trade. So the EU harmonized voltages. However, none of the countries really had to make any changes to their equipment. How did the European Commission achieve this without changing any equipment? So they did a very, very simple, very basic thing. What did they do to achieve this without changing any of the equipment? Because all the UK equipment was at 240 volts, while the rest of Europe was at 220 volts. teammates question uh so simply like by using the transformer like step up and step down transformers step up and step down uh okay uh i think we might actually venkat can we give that I think that's okay. Uh, it's not exactly a, a transformer, but can you just explain what do you mean when you say step up, step down? Uh, sir, like by keeping the power constant, we can, like on the basis of current, we can step up and step down the voltages actually. Okay, I think I'll give it to you because this is a complicated question. I don't expect anybody else to come up with a better answer and you got, uh, so they just amended the voltage limits a little bit. Right, like you said, it is a step up, step down in a way because the, you, they could encompass a supply error of 10% above or below. So anywhere from 207 to 253 volts is something that they uh, kind of allowed, right? And therefore the uh, equipment could work automatically. I know it's not the exact answer, but you're playing alone. So, and we want you to score points. So 10 points to Aman of IIT Gavhati. Uh, question next to Mansi of NIT Jaipur. Pick a number. Six. Six. Okay, your lucky number is six. Let's see how you go with this. This specially constructed object made news in 2014 when Sam Christopheretti used it at her workplace. Following this, she cheekily added that her mission motto was to boldly brew where no man has. What was the name given to this object? Or you can simply tell us where exactly was this object used? Okay. Let's see the image. Where exactly was this object used? I will tell you that it is a kind of coffee brewing machine. Tell me where was it used? Hands on screen, both hands on screen, everyone. Where exactly was it used? You don't have to name it. Just tell me where was it used. That's fine. It is used at a very unique place.
Um, sir, uh, it may be space. Okay. Uh, can you give me a better, slightly better answer? What in space? Please unmute. Okay. Um, space. Space. Nancy, you have somebody else in the room. I can clearly hear another person's voice. Uh, please don't do this. Right. We can clear. My other team members. If your other team member is there, they should be on video. If they are sitting next to you, please ask them to come into the camera. Because I can clear, clearly hear somebody else's voice, right? So I am not going to give you points for this. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't give you points. Uh, others, uh, you can send in your answers on. We need a very specific answer on the, on the buzzer. Just saying uh, where will not do. I need a very specific answer. We need, a, we need the pun involving the workplace, right? So we need a very specific answer. In five seconds, if you want to send it in, remember there's a minus five. We'll be very strict on this. We need a very specific answer. I'm going to close it in five, four, three, two, and one. Closed. Did we get any answers, Venkat? Four teams have given the workspace. Okay. Uh, have they given it exactly right? The name given to it, uh, nobody has given it. Nobody has given it. Okay. Uh, that uh, means no negatives, no points to anybody. Uh, the Where it was used was the ISS, the International Space Station. But this was called Espresso, right? It's a pun on Espresso. It was called Espresso. We wanted the pun for the for the pounds, for the direct. It was okay. But Team I'm 3 sorry. sent it, but after we closed it. No, that's okay. No points. No points. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I don't want to make this unpleasant at all. I'm warning everybody one more time, one final time. Beyond this, I'm not going to do warnings. I'm just going to. We are going to take a discretionary call and just straight away disqualify you from the quiz, right? So please don't let it come to that. Uh, next, uh, we will have uh, the next pick by NIT Varangal Rachit. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Sir. yes. Uh, yeah. So I'll pick number two. Number two? Okay. Since 1951, the Japan has had what are called Sakura Zensen forecasts. They are based on the Arrhenius equation where there is a mean temperature and number of days which is calculated. There are 59 sample locations across the country corresponding to principal weather stations. What are these forecasts all about? They are weather forecasts. Uh, they are not weather forecasts. Okay. Any other teams want to buzz? You have five seconds. Five, four, want to pounce, that is not buzz. Send in your answer on chat. Five, four, three, two, and one. And it's closed. Anybody? We have four guesses from team five, 10, nine, and six. Okay. Anybody got it right? Team 10 gets it right. Okay. Five, nine, and six get it wrong. Okay. So minus five to team five, minus five to team six, minus five to team nine, plus 10 to team 10. Team 10, please tell us the answer. NIT Suratkal. Uh, sir, it's cherry blossoms. Cherry blossoms. Absolutely right. Sakura is the Japanese word for the cherry blossom flower. And they use this complicated equation to figure out when cherry blossoms actually bloom in the summer. In yeah, team, team 7, you were too late. Sorry, we couldn't accept. Sorry, Team 7. You have to send it in on time. Okay. Uh, that was uh, minus 5 to 5, 6 and 9 and plus 10 to Team 10. Next chance, Team 1. IIT, ISM, your chance to pick. What number would you like? Sir, 7. 7. Sophia is a humanoid robot developed by Hansen Robotics, a Hong Kong company. They modeled the robot on two famous people and the inventor's wife. The two famous people are one is an Egyptian queen who was the wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten. The other is an Oscar winning actress who descended from a Dutch aristocratic family. You can tell me even one of the two. That's fine. You can 
Sir, Cleopatra. And who is the actress? No. No. Okay, that's not correct. So it's open for the others to try. Uh, on the on the buzz, I on the pounds, I need both answers. If you give one right, one wrong, that still be minus five. I need two answers: an Egyptian queen and an Oscar-winning actress. Five, four, three, two, and one, and closed. Anyone? No pounces. No pounces. This is a tough question. Let's see the answer. Wait, we got one. We got one. Okay. Team three. Yeah. And they, they have it? the first name of the actress. That's fine. We'll give it. Okay. And yeah. do they have the Egyptian queen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team three, give us the answer. So you just said that half of the answer would be considered incorrect. That's why in type. No, it is not half of the answer. They've yeah, given they, the full they answer. They've given it. Yeah. Team three, Who what's did? the answer? So Queen Nefertiti and Audrey Hepburn. Perfect answer, Team Three. Take your ten points. Queen Nefertiti and Audrey Hepburn. That's what we wanted. Queen Nefertiti, Sophia the robot, is based on Queen Nefertiti, Audrey Hepburn, and the inventor's wife. Excellent. Okay. Next, IIT Madras. I think it's your turn to pick, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. We'll pick five. We'll pick five. Okay. In the early 1900s, William Murphy was courting a lady while he lived alone in a one-room apartment. It was considered inappropriate to bring a young lady into one's bedroom, so Murphy needed a solution. His patent was at the height of its popularity in the 1920s and 30s. We'll show you an image. Simply tell us what did he patent. You can describe with two words. What did he patent? Because he could not bring a lady into the bedroom of his house. But she still had to, you know, stay there in the house. Take a simple, obvious guess. He could not bring the lady into his bedroom, yet she had to stay there for the night. So what kind of thing did he patent? ITM answer? Maybe a radio. Radio, not a radio. Open on the pounds, uh, on the chat. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And closed. Uh, again, uh, Krishna, you have sent the message to everyone. You are supposed to send a DM. You have sent it to everyone. Uh, and a generic answer will not do. We wanted something specific. So does uh, has anybody pounced and got it, Venkat? Uh, nobody has given the answer we are looking for. Everyone saying Murphy bed. Murphy bed will not do. Uh, uh, Murphy bed, no negatives, but no points for Murphy bed. Uh, we want we... to know wh what is a Murphy bed, right? So just saying Murphy bed will not do. Uh, Murphy bed is... Team one has sliding wall as the answer. Sliding wall. Sir, it was holding like bed into the wall, but you could not type it in five seconds. That is fine. Well, I won't give you negatives then, but I will not give points for things like Murphy bed and things like that. You could have just typed folding bed. That was the answer that we were looking for, right? Uh, just bed will not do. So let's not give negatives to anyone, but no points unless folding bed is there. Sliding wall and all will not do. Uh, let's see the answer. Yeah, it is just a pivoting bed or a folding bed. The bed could be folded and slid onto the wall. That's correct. But it is a folding bed. We need explanations, not just names. Okay, five teams are, uh, six teams are done. Four teams are left. I think the next, it is uh, IIT, BHU, Priyanshu and team. Yeah. You haven't picked, right, Priyanshu? Yes, sir. I'm the... He is disconnected due to Wi-Fi issues. Okay, no problem. Amit. So, so I will cho choose four. Four? Okay. The first thing that workers do in a certain scenario is containment. There are a wide variety of booms used for this. The booms consist of a floating section 
with a skirt hanging below. Booms take too much time to be deployed, which can be deadly. A company came up with a lightweight boom, which can be deployed rapidly from a small craft. This system starts operating within minutes. In what kind of scenarios are these booms used? I will tell you that they are used on the sea. Okay, They are used on the ocean or the sea, but they are used to contain something. So in what kind of scenarios are they used? Make a guess, Amitesh. So, is it oil spill? Oil spills is all we wanted. Well done. Well done, uh, uh, Amitesh. Team 5 gets plus 10 for saying oil spills. That's it. They're used to contain oil spills. That's all we wanted. Plus 10 to ITBHU Team 5. Good answering there. Next, it's the turn of Jadavpur University to pick. We'll choose 3. 3. Rajarai chooses three. A, it is a program error that disappears or alters its characteristics when an attempt is made to study it. B, it refers to a function or feature that appears to fluctuate between buggy and correct until somebody looks at the source code at which point it becomes permanently buggy. Identify A and B, both of which are obtained by modifying the surnames of two famous scientists. If you, if you just give me the two scientists, that's also fine. So the first one is something that disappears or alters its characteristics. So it deals with uncertainty in a certain way, in a way. The second one is something that is... A, a will be uh, Heisenberg. Okay. And B, where two things both appear to be correct till you actually look at one, after which only that is correct. Another famous scientist and a paradox associated with him. Dangerous, dangerous. Schrodinger, I'll give it to you. That's all I wanted. Heisenberg and Schrodinger, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and Schrodinger's cat or Schrodinger. If they are called Heisenberg and Schrodingbug, but the essential part is Heisenberg and Schrodinger. Good answer. Jadapur University, 10 points to you. Nicely done. Okay. NITK, do you want 9 or 10? Uh, sir, I would want 10. You will want 10. All right. Stain Lung is the tech-savvy Prime Minister of Singapore. During a speech a few years ago, he couldn't help show off his tech credentials. He said, the last program I wrote was a blank in C++ several years ago, so I am out of date. He later posted the code for his program online. Given here is the sample of the code. What exactly does this code do? Very simple, take a look at the image. So it says various things. Then it says record entries 1 to 9 in the grid as the corresponding bit set to 1. Each int is a 9-bit array. And then various swaps and sequences and so on. What is this used for? What is this software program used for? It says 1 to 9 and a grid. Code again? Yeah. So... Looks like it's solving Sudoku. Perfect answer. It is solving a Sudoku. Excellent answering there, uh, NITK. It is a Sudoku solver. As simple as that. Nicely done, NITK. All right. Uh, KGP, I'm afraid you don't have a choice. You have to go with nine. Here it is. Okay. B will be the end of A. Right? So explain what we are talking about. A is a particular law. B is an object. So A is a law. It's a law that is uh, used widely in the world of computers and technology. right? You can see some numbers on the left. Uh, the starting point of the law when it was postulated was in the 1970s. You can see some numbers on the left going from 100 to 100 million. Uh, and you can see uh, years on the right. Uh, and there's another image. Yeah, this is just a generic image. right? So what exactly are we talking about here? What law is this and what are we talking about? This is just a generic representation. This is a specific law. So this is A. The next image that you see with the red color things there are is B. So B will be the end of A. What exactly does this mean? 
I know all of you are mechanical engineers. This is a little computer science type question, but it's something quite familiar that you can work out. Uh, yeah, uh, is it like the uh, the storage devices will be exhausted and uh, uh, storage devices will be exhausted? Okay, got it. And uh, the wall can, but then, no idea. No idea. Okay, not nothing to do with storage devices. Uh, anybody wants to pounce this is a very complicated answer. I'm telling you, if you are if you are putting it on the chat, you need to be pretty much exactly right uh, for us to be able to give you points. Five seconds, five, four, three, two, and one. Anyone? We I have three guesses. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, four guesses. Okay. Two have just named the law. Just naming the law doesn't get you points. Team one has computing speed. That is again. Ex a broad explanation, okay. Team seven says ladder against wall. Okay, ladder against wall is uh, specifically wrong. I'm sorry. I'll have to give minus five to team seven. Uh, for the other teams, again, you know, we'll be computing we'll... speed and Moore's law is what the other teams have. Computing speed, Moore's law is only part of the answer. So no negatives, but no points on that on computing speed, Moore's law, etc. Yes, it is Moore's law. You're right. It is uh, the the uh, power of the chip, but let's look at the exact answer. This is Moore's law, but the end of Moore's law is supposed to be the red brick wall, right? It is the limit of the electronic industry's ability to shrink transistors below a certain size. So that means Moore's law will no longer hold true because uh, the Moore's law basically says that the number of transistors in an IC and therefore the compute power kind of doubles approximately every two years. But that won't hold true when the industry hits the red brick wall. So that's something new to learn about the red brick wall and the Moore's law. Right. That's the end of the rather long grid round. We are a little behind time. So let's move on a little quickly. We look at scores maybe a little later, unless you have it ready and you can pull it up immediately. Uh, yes, I, I'll just... Okay. okay. All right. I think some movement in the scores. Okay, team one on 13, uh, Dhanbad, team two ITM on 18, uh, Jadapur have come up nicely. They are on 50, currently in second place. Varangal on 10, uh, BHU on 33. Uh, yeah, uh, Varangal is on 20. Uh, NIT Varangal, no, I have them on 10 only. Okay. Uh, BHU on 33, uh, IIT KGP who were in the early lead have slipped slightly, they, but they're still very much in contention on 43, uh, IIT Gavahati on 10, uh, uh, NIT Jaipur on 5, IIT BHU uh, second team will surely open their account. Currently in the lead are NIT Suratkal on 63, right? So close game, 63, 50, 43 could be anybody's game. We're going to go to the next round. Now, hands on screen, nothing to type. There's no chat, no buzzer, nothing. It's like the first round. I need to see everybody's hands on screen. We're going to go in reverse order, uh, starting from team 10, right? So team 10, here is your question. The first word defined is, is defined as the feeling that you get when someone ditches you to a plan. As in, I feel blank. I can't believe we did that. The second word is a mental purification process in which the subject is strategically trained to lose all fears of mind and body and attain a higher form of coolism. As in, I went through a rigorous blank session before going for a job interview. These are two new words that came about because of a hit Hindi film in the late 2000s. So for full points, tell me the exact words. I'll give you part points if you give me a good explanation as to where did we see these words exactly? What do they refer to? Things like that. So could you just repeat the last hint that you said? Yeah, I said voice? it is a it is a hit Hindi film, and this these words were these are made up words. Okay, they are not real words. These words were made up, and we saw these words in a hit Hindi film that involved students in the late two thousands, and. 
you can i'll give you part points if you tell me the context and what these words were roughly and so on full points if you give the exact words uh the first word sounds like ditched as in i feel ditched okay like i said these are not regular words so don't try to fill in the blank with things like ditched and so on the uh, word is as in if the words are in english or hindi the word is yeah it's kind of in english you can say but it's essentially the word is the uh, you know it's it's like a compound word it's an english word only but it's made up word completely made up uh, sir uh, just to be clear this noun does not have negative marking right no negative marking no negative marking at all the dumb may be the first word i'm just okay. guessing this what is the context in which you came across these words i'm supposed to guess the words right no you give me if you see the words are difficult to guess which is why i'm saying you give me the context correctly i'll give you five points in what context did you see these words as in the example is already is defined definition is already given in the uh, screen only so what am i supposed to guess that like what which okay in which hindi film did you come across these words uh, so three idiots maybe okay three idiots okay uh, you have any more guesses on the words no sir okay uh, passes to nitj mansi if you don't have a guess quickly say pass because we are little behind schedule we need to finish this in 20 minutes so five moment and five seconds let me take i'll have to pass you we going to go a little quickly sorry we'll give you enough time on your directs to think uh, gavati passing uh, bhu krishna nothing passes kgp uh, yeah it is from the film three idiots where uh, like uh... Rancho was teaching in the class, so one word is foreign nitrate, and other is pre-regulation of things. Brilliant answer, absolutely right, perfect. Ten points to you. This is Rancho teaching in the class where he comes up with words like foreign nitrate and pre-regulation. Absolutely perfect answer. Full ten points to IIT KGP. Uh, and so no part points. Therefore, since the exact answer has been given, no part points for just the movie part for um, uh, NITK. Great answering plus ten. good come back by kgp there uh, itbhu priyanshu your question zanu c is an italian manufacturer of home appliances a popular brand in the uk in the 1990s its tagline was the appliance of science following a scientific development in the mid 1990s they came up with an infamous advertisement in the uk which was called the miss appliance of science so they were basically protesting against a, some scientific development that happened in the mid 90s which resulted in a newborn okay uh, it is not a newborn human being i will tell you that it was a newborn animal what were they protesting against it was a newborn animal that they were protesting against what exactly what scientific development were they protesting priyanshu Yes, sir. I am thinking. Yeah, I have given you all the clues. Mid nineties scientific development. They were protesting against it, and it was a newborn animal. So sheep, dolly. Why dolly the sheep? What about dolly? So somewhere I read that. What is it? What is so famous about dolly the sheep? it was some cloning uh, somewhere i read okay i'll give it to you it is dolly the sheep uh, the first cloned animal dolly mm. the sheep uh, it is the first cloned mammal and they were protesting against the concept of cloning right so that's 10 points to bhu there uh, next question to nit varangal rachit they were developed in 1949 under contract to the us air force for testing aircraft ejection seats Sierra Sam was the first of its kind another industry borrowed this idea making it famous 
what are we talking about that is more famous in the automobile industry sir is it airbags not airbags nice guess passes to ju sir crash test dummies crash test dummies is right well done rajai crash test dummies so originally used for testing ejection seats in aeroplanes but then used by the automobile industry to test uh, cars and uh, any kind of uh, two wheeler or four wheeler automobiles crash test dummies or ctds well done 10 points to jadavpur next question to iit madras as a result of germany's energy policy only 130 breeding pairs of the lesser spotted eagles survive today to counter this a company has developed an ai system which has lakhs of images of the birds fed into it linked to the cameras atop towers it is expected to detect approaching eagles and it electronically alerts machines that may normally end up killing these birds to do something what type of machines are these uh, is this technology used on and what will they do when they are alerted there's an image yeah so this is the the sensor it is placed on top of a tall object right a tall moving object and it will alert that object to when it senses the birds coming nearby that object will kind of do something so on what kind of object is it placed and what will it do it is the object mobile it make will the object move it will make the object move okay and what object is it Yes, I'm asking you. I no, don't... no, you're asking me. No, no, it's a stationary object, okay. but some part of the object moves. Yes. The whole yes. object itself does not move, but some part of the object moves. Yes, so our guess would be high tension wires. High tension and, wires. Okay. Yes, sir. So uh, on detecting an eagle flying towards it, it cuts the power. It cuts the power. Lovely guess, actually. Uh, somebody should take this up as an idea. It's a very nice guess, but it's not correct in this case. Uh, ISM? Are we supposed to answer on our own or we will pass? You can pass if you don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's team one's guess. Are you passing team one? I can't hear you at all. Okay, uh, passes to team 10. Uh, sir, I think it's installed on the wind turbine and it okay. shows them that they are alerted. Like Perfect windmills. answer. That's all I wanted. These are installed on windmills or wind turbines and it slows them down when it's alerted so the birds can actually pass through. So the turbine will go into like a trundle mode, only have two rotations per minute. So it will go much more slowly so that the eagles can pass through. Otherwise, these wind turbines, when they go very fast, the windmills, they end up accidentally cutting into the eagle's flight. Excellent answer. NIT Suratkal back in the game with plus 10. NIT Jaipur, Mansi, your question. Charles Pearson first came up with the idea. In the 1840s, his idea of digging a hole under the city was brushed off as impractical. 20 years later, it was the first of its kind in the world and the city had was in an uproar. A local minister accused the uh, company of undertaking the project of trying to break into hell. Now, similar such projects are there in many Indian cities. It was first started, such a project in India was first started in Calcutta. And then uh, now you have it in, in Bangalore, in, uh, in Chennai, in Bombay, uh, in Jaipur, in several cities. What exactly are we talking about? Which is making a hole below the surface and doing something. What exactly are we talking about? And in which city was Charles Pearson doing this? It's a famous world city, which is the capital of a country. Mansi, you can unmute and answer when you're ready. Make a guess, please.
think about what could be a major project that is below the under the city and like i told you it is there now in many indian cities as well um sir it might be a metro metro very good and so in which city are they talking about where the in the world where the first ever type metro came up do you think it's a world capital city i made a guess of tokyo i guess i Not sure. But look at the name Charles Pearson. Try to come up with a with a guess. I'm going to give you the points anyway. Take another guess, Charles Pearson. Which country do you think? Um, it is a country where Charles Pearson might be of. I guess in England, Britain. Yeah. So. so therefore which city will it be if it is england britain london correct so this is the london mm -hmm. metro or the london underground metro absolutely right the london tube that is what we are talking about let's see the answer yeah the london underground well done well done 10 points to you on london metro or london underground it was the first underground metro service in the world and people were quite uh, agitated over it now of course it is something it was an engineering marvel it continues to be a complex piece of engineering as you know right 10 points to team 9 team 8 iit guwahati simple question for you from 1997 intel provided the technology for this unique project when the subject situation deteriorated the biggest problem became missed key hits which led to further difficulty in communicating intel later said we are trying to teach the world's most famous and smartest 72 year old grandfather to learn this new way of interacting with technology who was the 72 year old grandfather a very very famous scientist so he had various difficulties in communicating and then when his situation worsened he could not hit keys also properly so stephen hawking sorry stephen hawking Stephen Hawking and what what do you think the project was? What were they actually kind of uh, helping him with? A uh, computer for the communication with limited set of keys. Correct, correct, absolutely right. Stephen Hawking is right. So Stephen Hawking and as you know, Stephen Hawking had uh, ALS disease and couldn't really speak towards the end of his life. So he was speaking only through a machine, and that is what Intel was powering. right so that's stephen hawking's electronic speech good 10 points to iit gavati aman solo player well done uh, next question to bhu krishna his reputation was established through his work of telegraphy in 1872 he applied for one of his earliest patents an elegant black and gold invention his improvements particularly those related to synchronizing multiple units were a great commercial success they were used for more than a century until the internet came about who was this famous scientist and inventor very very famous scientist and inventor very famous and what did he patent let's see the image yeah. let's see the image yeah this is something that he patented it was used in the financial sector okay it is used in the financial sector these days it is electronic but earlier it used to be used in the financial sector who is this very very famous person very famous scientist and inventor he had many 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 patents to his name danish devian and electroplating nope incorrect passes to kgp uh, yeah uh, it is uh, the telegraph and uh, alexander graham bell yes telegraph and alexander graham bell no passes to priyanshu mm. so samuel mohors not samuel morse passes to rachit nit varangal is it edison sorry so is it edison okay edison and what is this uh, that he patented so is it is it like a punching machine to for what like punches holes for data for data no passes to ju Rajay,
No answer. Passes. IIT Madras. Uh, edition and data tape. What what tape? Data tape. Data tape for what kind of data? A binary. Not what I'm looking for. Niranjan. I some done bad. Uh, sir. Uh, sir. So it was like uh, it like it is used to represent binary data like. If there is a hole, it represents one. If there is no hole, like Understood. it's kind Understood. of a punching press. Not, not, not what we're looking for. Not, not what we're looking for. We're looking for something specific. An ITK. Uh, so scientists could be Edison and uh, Edison uh, I think it's uh, some of printing telegraph. Nothing to do with printing telegraph. Nope. Uh, uh, NIT Jaipur. So I think it might be a caustic telegraph. Nothing to do with the telegraph at all. Passes to Aman, IIT Gavati. You have a guess, Aman? No, sir. Pass. Okay. It was IIT BHU's question. So five points to team uh, four, NIT Warangal, who were the first to say Edison. It is Thomas Alva Edison. Right, and this is the stock ticker. This is the stock ticker on which you see the, the 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 various stocks and their prices come about. Today, the stock ticker is obviously available electronically and fed through the internet. But one of his early patents was the stock ticker. So all of you said telegraph, and telegraph was given in the question anyway. And um, you, you know, you said data and all that, which is which is the basis for this. But this was specifically the stock ticker. So that's five points to team four, NIT Varangal. Next question to Rajrai Jadavpur. Three questions left. Interesting question. Henry Smolinski, an engineer who tried to invent a flying car. Uh, yeah, uh, one moment. Uh, it is a direct for six, I guess. No, it is not a direct for six because team four got five points. So it's a direct for three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Henry Smolinski, an engineer who tried to invent a flying car. Horace Hunley, a lawyer and innovator who helped design three different submarine models during the American Civil War. Thomas Midgley Jr., a chemist who built a rope and pulley system to support his body while he was suffering from polio. What is common to all these people? Who is arguably the most famous woman who would belong to the same list? You have to think a little bit and give me an innovative answer on this. The woman is a very, very famous scientist. Jadavpur University, this is your question. Mary Query, the most famous person. Okay. And what is this list all about? The, all the people who died by their own invention. Perfect answer, J.U. Absolutely perfect answer. This is Marie Curie. And these are people who were killed by their own inventions. And Marie Curie died of aplastic anemia caused by radiation exposure after her discoveries of polonium and so on. Absolutely brilliant answer by J.U. there. Excellent 10 points to you. Inventors killed by their own inventions and Marie Curie. Okay, penultimate question of this round to IIT Madras. Uh, IIT Madras, uh, the wall of tiles can be seen as a visitor passes through the main building, past the Fountain Plaza, the Gautam Gira Square, and the Big Tree. All familiar landmarks in this location. In which institute in India will you find this wall? It is an institute located in Western India. So you see various logos of various companies over here. In which institute in Western India, educational institution in Western India, will you find this wall? And it is not an institution that has anything to do with science. I will tell you that. Yes, maybe. Maybe I am both Gaya because I am both Gaya. Nice try, but I told you it's in the western part of the country, not I am both Gaya. Uh, IIT ISM. Sir, 
सर इंडियन सॉरी इंडियन व्हाट इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट अहमदाबाद नॉट आई एम अहमदाबाद पासेस टू एनआईटी के मध्य प्रदेश दिस इज दिन विच इज लोकेटेड इन अहमदाबाद right so this is the national institute of design nid that's why you could see various symbols with various logos which nid team has actually designed it's a nice answer there from mansi from nit jaipur that gets her 10 points last question of this round goes to iit guwahati aman nvh again we end with a question we began with a question on um, fame we end with a question again related to vehicles and automobiles nvh is the field of measuring and modifying some characteristics of vehicles n and v are measurable quantities h is a ride quality issue where the vehicle's response to the road transmits sharply to the occupants just simply expand nvh all are regular english words n and v is something you can measure h is a more subjective thing what is n what is v what is h and it is used for vehicle testing mostly four wheelers though you can use it for two wheelers as well if you want uh, sir n or v could be maybe night vision night vision okay not night vision i'll have to pass you krishna is vibration and harshness say again is vibration and harshness what is the n yeah noise correct noise vibration and harshness that's the right answer n and v stand for noise and vibration and h stands for harshness which is what the feel of the vehicle is this in the vehicle so that's a good 10 points to bhu who ensure that they finish in the positive in the quiz very good i'd like to see everybody finishing in positive last round buzzer round coming up final six questions to determine who will be the uh, champions of this quiz uh, buzzin.live code is on the chat please go to buzzin.live so you're not audible am i not audible can you hear me Yeah, Wengi, we can hear you. you okay, are... all right, all right. Final buzzer round coming up. Please go to buzzin. Live. We have six questions remaining to determine who will be the Bajaj Talk twenty twenty two twenty three champion. Uh, Wengi, uh, sorry. In round three, I just wanted to cross check scores. Yeah. Um, in round three, the team five get fifteen points or uh, five points. Uh, uh huh. <coughs> in round three, is it? Yeah, they got one negative, and they yeah. answered two, so that's fifteen, yeah. right? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Do you want to pull up the scores once before the buzzer round, so that people can decide their buzzing strategy, perhaps? Yes. One second. Yeah. Let's just do that. You know, teams, you can then make up your mind on you know whether you should buzz, not buzz, etc. Because it's a very close quiz. I can tell you that uh, three teams are absolutely neck on neck. uh hold on one second waiting for teams 9 and 10 to join team 10 leave up to join all right 
Yep. So we have a super close contest at hand. Good part is all teams are on the positive. Very good. Uh, in the current lead are NIT Suratkal uh, with 73 points. Very, very close behind them are Jadapur University on 70 points. And not too far behind them are IIT Kharagpur on 53 points. Uh, tailing them very closely are IIT BHU who are on 48 points. And then we have teams in the 20s and 10s. Remember, there are 48 points to be made in this round. Six questions plus eight minus four for each question. So, you know, anybody can literally, if you answer all 48 points, then, you know, you could win the quiz. Honestly, many teams can win the quiz. So it's going to be a very close contest. All the best. Everybody is in on the buzzer. Yes, we can start. Okay. All the best. All six questions are on Bajaj, right? So let's get cracking. Question number one. Which brand of Bajaj launched in 1972 shares its name with Maharana Pratap's war horse? Bus from Team 7. Team 7? Answer. Hello. Are you Nidane Jipnadi? Chetak. Chetak is right. Chetak. Chetak. Yes, yes. Plus 8 to Team 7. On Chetak. Reset. Yeah. Bajaj Auto International Holdings BV is a 100% subsidiary of Bajaj Auto based out of which European country? Bajaj Auto International Holdings BV. Bus from team to ITM. ITM? Need an immediate answer, guys. You cannot buzz and take time. I'll give you negatives. Minus 4 to team 2? Team 7. Team 7? KTM. I asked which European country. You are not even re uh, listening to my question. Minus 4 to team 7. Uh, all we wanted was Netherlands. Uh, yeah. So don't try and Google Bajaj Auto International Holdings BV and come up with KTM and so on as the answer. We wanted, listen to the question, right? We wanted Netherlands. Next question. Uh, Bajaj Bajaj yeah. yeah. Which writer, currently a board member at Bajaj Auto, which person, currently a board member at Bajaj Auto, has written the biography, Rahul Bajaj, An Extraordinary Life? She is a business leader herself. Five. Bus from Team 7. Team 7? Need an answer immediately, Team 7. You can't buzz and Keita then... Pariman. Keita Piramal is right. But can I please see your hands on screen and can you please answer immediately? Right? Please answer immediately. Geeta Piramal is right. Plus 8 to Team 7. Three questions remaining in the torque finale. Still, leaderboard is the same. NIT Suratkal on 73. Jadavpur University on 70. IIT KGP on 53. Somebody has to make a move here. Question 4. Which Bajaj brand dubbed India's first and only auto taxi completed 7 lakh trips recently in Bangalore? Which Bajaj brand dubbed India's first and only auto taxi completed 7 lakh trips in Bangalore? Bus from Team 7. Team 7? Bajaj Quiet. What is the spelling? Q-U-I-T, I guess. Q-U-I-T. Okay. Q -U uh, it's actually Q-U-T-E. Cute. But we'll give it to you. That's plus 8 to Team 7. Who are making a late comeback with the buzzer round. Two questions remaining in the finale. The leaderboard is still very close. All the best. Both JU and NID Suratkal. Question 5. In 2022, Bajaj Auto launched the reimagined and re-engineered Dash P150. Fill in the blank. P150. Think of a famous brand. Bus from Team 2. Team 2? Pulsar. Pulsar is right. Well done. Plus 8 to Team 2. All right. That brings us to the very last question of the Bajaj Talk Finale 2022. Thank you all very much for playing. We had several top institutions from across the country participate in the quiz. And it has come down to the very last question where the last question may actually determine the champion of the quiz. All right. So it's a close fight between, uh, I think uh, now only two teams are in contention which is NIT Varangal, uh, 
which is Jadapur University and NIT Suratkal. Jadapur University around 70, NIT Suratkal around 73. Okay. Here is the last question. The Bajaj V15, V15 was manufactured using steel sourced from which vessel that was Bus India's... from Team 6. Okay, Team 6. IIT Vikrant, KGP. Vikrant. INS Vikrant is correct. IIT KGP finished the quiz very strong with a good plus 8 on INS Vikrant. But that leaves us with the following result on the leaderboard. Let's take a look. Uh, just one minute. I'll just cross check all of it. Yeah. Okay, Devasmita, a few words from you before we pull up the final scores and announce the winners. I think that was a great quiz. And really, some of the questions even kept me thinking. So, really nice, really. And all the teams... Thank you so much for participating and your enthusiasm was great. Of course, there were some technical difficulties while connecting with the teams. But in an online setup, I think this is the best we have done. And uh, great. This was the second season of Torque that we had launched across 28 campuses. And we'll be back again with a bang with the third season of Torque soon. And uh, great uh, guys, thank you so much. And let's um, wait for who our final winners are. Thank you very much, everyone. Please spread the word about Torque uh, in your campuses, right? To your juniors, uh, to your other batchmates. Because like Devasmita said, Torque Season 3 will come up later in 2023. And we'd like all of you and uh, your, uh, you know, your fellow batchmates from your campuses to participate in this quiz. Just a few seconds while we pull up the final results. Are we ready to go? With more or less on time as well. Yes, one, one minute. minute, sorry. Scores are fine, Aditi. Uh, till the last round uh, checked, I have the tally. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here are the final scores of the Bajaj Talk 2023 finale. We have NIT Varangal finishing with 15 points, IIT Gauhati with 20 points, IIT Madras with 22 points, IIT BHU and NIT Jaipur uh, tied on 25 points. Great solo performance there from uh, Mansi. Good performance from Aman as well. Both of them playing solo. IIT ISM Dunbar finished on 13 points. Uh, and we had a pretty close top four. IIT BHU on team five finished with 43 points. Uh, then we had IIT KGP with a great last answer. They were in an early lead, but just the format, I think, kind of didn't allow them to really come back. They were only one answer away from uh, a victory. Finishing on 61 points is IIT Kharagpur. Uh, taking the second place today and taking home prize money is Jadapur University with 70 points. And narrowly winning the quiz, neither Jadapur nor NIT Suratkal buzzed in the last round. Perhaps Jadapur could have been a little more aggressive on the buzzer, as could have IIT KGP. One more buzz and that might have got you into contention. But our champions for Bajaj Talk 2022-23 are NIT Suratkal with 73 points. So congratulations, NIT Suratkal and Jadapur University. And very well played IIT Karakpur and all the other teams for giving it a very, very close fight. I know there are limitations to the format. It's online. Uh, you know, there's only so much that, you know, we can do in terms of making sure that it's a good, engrossing, entertaining contest. I hope a lot of people watching on the live stream on YouTube enjoyed the quiz as well. Uh, we, we will be in touch with all the participants, all the winners for your certificates and for your prizes. The Bajaj team will be in touch with you. Uh, We'll do one kind of group picture with everyone. So if you can stop the screen share and if everyone can turn on their cameras, please. Yeah, that will be great. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Sir, I want to say something. Yeah, one second. Let's finish the picture. Then you can, of course, please share your thoughts.
All right. Somebody confirm that you've taken the screenshot? Yeah. All right. Okay, great. Thanks. All mm -hmm. right. You can stop. You can stop the live stream.